with our side curtain in place, we've got a roll bar that's going to go into the bottom of this pocket. There's a sewn pocket here. We're going to slide a bar in and then clip that bar into place. And that's what's going to make these roll up sides be able to go up and down uh, with a little mechanism we're going to attach as well. So we just start to slide the bar in. Get it into where one bar is in place. Slide the next bar in. It's got that nice swage fit again. These uh, will turn back and forth, so we want to do two things here to make sure that they're going to stay in there good. We're going to put two tech screws in, and they, they do like to spin, especially when there's only one bar. And then on top of the screws, those could wiggle themselves back and forth because of the torquing that happens when these things roll up and down. So just to make sure that they're not going to back out, we're going to put a little piece of tape over it as well. That makes it to where it slides into this curtain a lot easier as well. The more of these I put in, the more weight there is, the easier it is to put the screws in without them spinning on me. Each joint, two screws. So great working overhead because you can get your body weight on there and they cut very fast. Make it a little harder to push as they get longer. You can see it's very easy to get 48 feet of bar in with one hand. And this is going to end up being about an inch and a half longer than the wood baseboard for where it connects to our roll up mechanism. We'll be doing that next. Setting up these roll up curtains, we got to get a way to roll them up. So this little mechanism right here is what we call our roll up crank, five to one gear ratio. And we're going to get it on this guide pipe that I've put in place here. Just a little bit of chain and an eye bolt on here that I put through a pre-drilled hole. We have that all set up on our end bow. And then we drill this through the guide pipe comes with the nut and bolt right on the roll-up mechanism. Got a little adapter here that we're tightening up. Ratchet to tighten it up. Then it's all in place. We're just going to put on these plastic clips on the bottom of it. We set them up every eight feet down the house. Push them up from the bottom. Get them right on the bottom and kind of push them on one side at a time. They just slip on real nice. We're kind of avoiding those places where we made the joints, so we just slide them one side or the other. Not real important exactly where these go, just get them on about every eight feet. And then we're gonna go back and roll it up. These will turn either way. We could roll it inside out, but it just makes more sense for wear and tear to have this thing roll up. And after it's done it a couple times, this is going to get the air pockets out and look a little neater. This is self-locking, so I can just let go of it in any position. This might be a position we do in the spring just to have it up a little bit. We're building the house. We want it up, not at the top, but about here. And this is where we're going to set on some other parts we're going to use to lock the upper poly in place. So put it there, leave it for now. So anytime we have these roll-up curtains here, uh, we need to protect them from the wind. If they're down, let's say this far, they're going to be able to catch a lot of wind and want to blow around. So we need to put on wind ropes. And what's going to hold those wind ropes at the bottom and really support this roll bar when it's in the bottom position is what we call a roll bar cradle. And so we got a little jig we use to drill the hole. Um, that can just be measured. Um, then the hardware includes lag uh, uh, carriage bolts and we line them up with the square hole we've got going through. Put a nut 
on the back. And then that really should be enough, but what we find is, you know, on a farm there's a lot of abuse on these things, so we're going to put two more lag bolts through the top. That's just going to hold it in really good position. And then when we move down to the last one, you can just see one little exception here. We just need to make sure we're working with this uh, baffle that we put in, this wind baffle. And so we just got to make sure that that's loose enough before we bury it, that we can get these, uh, this into place and put the lag bolts in it. We're starting at each end of the house, just coming in a little bit from the end bow. And we're going every 12 feet with these. And they can be on either side of the bow at that point. Uh, every 12 feet, roughly, is, is plenty accurate for these. We want them in at the end, so they're just going to make sure we pick up that uh, roll bar when it comes down. And then we'll next thing we'll do is put some rope on those to uh, put the wind ropes in place. So we talked about the wind rope. It's not much of a rope. It's just a little strap. This is good for about 350 pounds of force, plenty for what we're doing. And we're going to give you a nice big uh, quantity of this so you have some to replace with. I'm just going to toss it out. We talked about how these uh, roll bar cradles are every 12 feet down the house. And we're going to zigzag these wind ropes up and down. And we're going to tie them off individually. So I've drilled a hole here for this little quarter inch knot. And we've got what we call our wind rope clips now. Uh, every six feet, or every, they're every 12 feet, but you know, six feet from each of the roll bar cradles. And then when we go to tie them off, we're going to tie each one individually. It's real easy to just go down the house and have one rope the whole length, but then if it breaks in any place, you're going to lose all your rope. So I just do two overhands and then loop it down through here just to get it out of the way so it's less likely to uh, get caught up in the roll bar or something. Just tie it off down below. Keep it out of the way down there. And then once we've got it tied off in the first position, we want to loop it around once at the wind rope clips just to keep it from shifting in the wind. And then I just come down, cut off an extra foot. We got S hooks in place everywhere. Just get it nice and snug. A couple overhands again. And then start to tie off the next one. And then again, if we want to just keep this neat and tidy, out of the way, less likely to get caught up somehow in this roll bar, we bring it down through there and just tie it off a couple times down below here. Maybe just do a little overhands down here. Just something that's going to keep it down below there. And rinse and repeat. Call us anytime you need some help and we'd be glad to talk you through any of these steps.